I always say separate the artificial intelligence from the human intelligence. What AI is a technology, it's a tool. You're going to use it. How can you use it to augment the HI? What do you think are the new human skills that are going to become really important in the, in the next few years? Yeah, that's, that's, I think, Karenza, that's honestly just like the golden question. You know, what are they? And, and I, I'm not even sure about new hum, human skills. I think it's just actually what we've got to do is focus on, you know, what we already understand that humans are brilliant at. And, and the way that I think the best way to think about this is separate the AI and the HI. Right? I always say separate the artificial intelligence from the human intelligence. What AI is a technology, it's a tool. You're going to use it. How can you use it to augment the HI? And so there's no simple answer to that question that you ask because there are many, many human skills that that are, you know, th that we need to nurture and develop and where we can leverage technology to make us even better at what we do. Um, and it will be different depending on different use cases and, and different examples. But critical thinking and being able to think to think and you know analyze and question is the single most important skill that we teach ourselves and our children and the reason why is because and, and this is something that i'm just really passionate about and ai very much plays into this is that the foundation of a of a democracy relies on for example a free press right the, the press of the eyes and ears of the public forensic journalism investigative journalism is incredibly important now, when you have people receiving their news and their media no longer from these larger news organisations that, you know, um, and you have your, you know, the ones that are impartial, you've got whatever you've got. But the point is, you know where it's coming from, but it's coming from trained journalists who are trained to source, you know, have sources as to what they're writing, evidence what they're writing. I know, that, again, we're going to get a lot of comments on not everyone does that. I get it. But, you know, generally, I'm thinking in principle and in theory. Um, if a trained journalist has written a piece, they're going to be thinking about it from a completely different way than a citizen journalist. Now, when most of us are now receiving our news from citizen journalists and from social media channels, but from persuasive technologies that then nudge us as to more and more of what we prefer, more and more what we like, where we kind of go down this rabbit hole of our preferences and maybe there's a bit of bias in there and you can see how that can create an issue. This, this inability for many people to be able to analyze, to think critically um, is a real problem because what happens is you start to trust. And we've seen this, for example, in other countries where there's propaganda, where there's, you know, it, people talking about elections being rigged, people, you know, spreading untruths, if you like, um, that becomes a real problem. Sure. And this is one of the issues with, AI technology, this technology that can recommend, that can nudge, that can learn about you, learn about your behaviours. Um, and when particularly those organisations are very much judged by their investors on engagement time, you know, on keeping you hooked, on not, not really wanting you to log off, then that human skill is more important. And it's incredibly important for, for, for children and for young people as they grow up to understand what is the difference between fake news and fact? How do you know? Have you questioned this? And ChatGPT is a really good example. You know, when it first came out and you had these children and these young, well, even not even children, just adults, everyone asking questions, just relying on the answers. It was making up information <laughs> and sources. Yes, yeah. uh, one of the teachers in uh, in my organisation was absolutely horrified. It made up a quote from Othello. Yeah. And um, when it asked it some yeah. question about some Shakespeare thing. And then and then another teacher was absolutely mortified when it stated that William the Conqueror did not win the Battle of Hastings. And he was really upset about that. <laughs> I've apparently written a book that I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, and I think the thing is, is that over-relying on this, uh, you know, the output if you like, of um, of these systems and not being able to, uh, to to judge the source and, you know, where it's coming from. Again, that sort of critical thinking set of skills is, um, you know, it, it's going to be incredibly important that we nurture those. And so I think that's a fundamental one. When we're talking about artificial intelligence, what's the one human skill that we need to develop to defend ourselves against 
some of the negative things that can come from this technology is incredibly important. But obviously, if you have that skill set, you can allow yourself to further thrive with it as well, right? So there's a positive yeah, side of things as well. Absolutely. Do you know what? I did a history degree and history is just all about analysing biased thoughts yeah. and trying to get to the bottom of what the truth is. And at the, after I did it, I'm like, well, I'm never going to use any of this, any of these skills in the real world. I just did it because I like history. But as I get older, it's like, the skills I learned analyzing sources is getting more and more relevant so to important. everything as we go further into this digital world. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, 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 as a lawyer, it's the same with me. I just think, you know, um, whenever you read anything, uh, it's about what are the facts behind what you're reading. What's quite interesting is people read things sometimes how they want to read things, right? And there's lots of different forms of bias and confirmation bias. But then, can you imagine, that's, that's, you know, sadly, that's something I think that all of us do. You know, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. We all have um, these, these biases that, that come in the way in terms of how we're taking in information. But now, yeah. couple that with a persuasive technology that's feeding it to you. Right. So, so, so that, that becomes a real issue. And if we want to be live, if we want to live in a world that is less polarized than where it is now, then this is really, really important. Um, and policymakers really need to take this seriously and they need to ensure that there is time and resource available in formal educational institutions to be able to focus on those skills and that particular skill set, you know, across the board. Um, and, you know, I think, I think this is fundamental. And actually, the book does cover this, but it's become even more relevant in the last few months, given that we can now even show how this technology is able to do that. What sort of role do you see governments, for example, playing in regulating AI and its impact on things like jobs and societies? So, well, on, on regulation, I don't know if you're aware, but I, I received a, a request from Sir Patrick Vallance just before Christmas to be involved in the review of regulation across every sector, but as it relates to artificial intelligence technologies and, and sort of broadly digital. The review actually just published and the Chancellor in the budget, uh, in uh, the spring budget, accepted all nine recommendations in the review. And, and, and what, what, and so this is exactly the sort of the answer to your question, if you like, is we looked at, at all regulation. Um, what was really, really interesting, and, and I won't bore everyone because they can just, it's all, it was in the news, it, you know, it's easy to find and there are nine recommendations. It's called the Innovation and Regulation Review, I think. But if you look at Sir Patrick Vallance, uh, you know, Review, Innovation, Regulation, Chancellor's Budget, it will come up. Um, in that review, the recommendations, there are several recommendations. Two really interesting ones are the Generative AI recommendation, and that is for policymakers to... Um, so this is very obviously relevant to so those listening, chat GPT is in GPT 3, 4 now, BARD, all of these are generative AI technologies, is for policymakers to give clarity um, in terms of uh, law um, on the input and the outputs of generative AI. Um, and then the, I think the, one of the most important sort of regulation recommendations that and this is all came from stakeholders so just so you know we, we spoke to many many stakeholders across um industries to understand what they needed because it was really about speaking to the ceos the, the heads of policy the the founders the ctos and saying you know where are you stuck you know where could you thrive in the uk being an ai technology company and and where are you stuck because of regulation or do you need regulation do you need clarity and so we asked all those questions and the most interesting one was a sandbox regulate regu recommendation so a cross-sector sandbox where um you know companies can apply to be in some sort of safe environment if you like um work with regulators on innovative technologies and there's you know this could relate to medical devices it could be generative ai generative ai there's this really interesting debate at the moment about watermarking technologies but that's not quite fully developed yet so you know but is there a regulatory issue that's related to that? And the idea is they would apply and then be in a safe environment working with regulators and then work with regulators to develop that regulation as the innovation develops, if you like. So um, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's always work to be done in regulation. It's difficult because it's always chasing innovation. <laughs> um, and um, but, but I really, really welcome the review that was conducted and the fact that all the recommendations were accepted by government. Mm -hmm.